Luke chapter 11, and we will read verse 13. There's so much power in this one aspect, and that's prayer. Luke chapter 11, and we will read verse 13. You got to realize that in prayer, that is speaking with God. And God, he's the one that has all the power, you got to understand. God up in heaven, who is omnipotent, he is alpha, and he is omega, beginning and the end. I think omega is like this, I forgot my Greek, but anyways. So we have alpha and omega here. He is beginning, and he is the end. So with all this power that God has, prayer is asking him for that power. Prayer is asking him to do something with his power, to take care of what? The things that you go through in this life. There is no problem greater than God. And I want you to all to remember that. I don't care what problems you have, financial, health, the whole world turning against you, the devil, government, family. I mean, there's all kinds of suffering or even all the religions, schools, all these people have no power against God, you got to understand. You're speaking to the creator of the universe here. And with all these problems you're going through in life, you're beseeching God to take care of these problems for you. But the problem is, is that how do I get God to answer my prayers, right? A lot of people, they want the secret, the power. Now, I've studied a lot of prayer divine, so to speak. And these people, they know a lot about the power of prayer. And in fact, these people have so much power in prayer. There were other people and even pastors who asked these men to pray for them. Because they knew that when they prayed, God answered them. So I'm going to give you here some secrets. The first, of all, the first one is Luke chapter 11 and verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. Now, the Bible says right here, concerning the power of prayer, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? So, notice right here that in order to have power in your prayer, the, who's channeling the prayers? Do you know? It's the Holy Spirit, right? Did you notice how it says more, how much more of the Spirit He can give you? So even though you have the Holy, everyone who's saved have the Holy Spirit in them, but you just want more of the Spirit. That's what you want. So it's important that when you pray, look, if evil people, as that verse says, can give good gifts to their children, God can give you more of that spiritual power if you'd ask Him. If you pray more of that Spirit, that Spirit could channel that prayer even more powerfully. I pray for the filling of the Spirit like several times a day, you got to understand. That's how, how often I ask it, several times a day, because it's so, it's so necessary. When I preach, whenever you heard me preach, you ever heard me always praying for the filling of the Spirit before I preach? You heard me pray that quite often, right? Because this is extremely important. That's why I can preach a powerful sermon. See, that? that's a secret. Let's also turn to Numbers chapter 14. Numbers 14. Look how you can change God's mind. What? Yeah, you can change God's mind. Didn't you know that? Try to be a Calvinist after that. You can't. You can change God's mind because there is this extremely big power. So Luke eleven thirteen. pray for the spirit filling, more of it. Secret number one for prayer. Secret number two, seek his glory. Look, God, what he cares about the most is what glorifies him. And when you seek after something that focuses on him, Lord, uh, I want you to answer this prayer request. And God asks, why should I answer that prayer request? And then you'll say, because, Lord, it will glorify you more. Think about how this will glorify you more. It will make people see your power. It will make people brag about you. It will make me brag about you. It'll put all the intention on you. And then God will go, oh, okay, I'm going to answer that. 
That's why the Lord blessed our church. I mean, you saw how small and uh, how uh, our church and our resources are, how small we are. You also saw how expensive this area is, one of the most expensive places in the States, if not the most expensive. But how did we were able to reach so many people? Because we, consi because we consistently prayed about, Lord, if you raise us up, we're going to raise you above all other gods and all other pastors and all other churches out there. And I made that promise to the Lord. And that's the only reason why the Lord would bless me today, you understand. So you got to focus on his glory, what glorifies him. That's why I will not compromise. I'm sorry if I offend you people, but if I teach a subject where it makes you unsubscribe or it's too controversial, I don't care. Because I made a promise to God that I will not compromise in giving out all of Bible-believing truth because Jesus is the truth, the way. And I want to brag that to the world and put him on top. So I will never take that back because I promise that if, I, if you would raise us up, Lord, I will do that no matter what. So no matter what you guys do, it's not going to change my mind. I made a promise to the Lord. Look at Numbers chapter 14, and we will read verse 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs that I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. So God's like, I'm going to wipe them out. But Moses changed God's mind. Look at verse 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people. Verse 15. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, verse 16, because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land. See that? Look what Moses was doing. Then you see you're going to, Lord, if you wipe out this people, these pagan Egyptians will say, oh, look at the God. See, that God, Jehovah, said that he'd bring them to the wilderness. But look, he didn't even do that. Their God must be weak. See, when you focus on what contaminates God's glory, and what glorifies him, you're going to make God answer the prayer. Look at verse 17 and 18. Here's another important thing. Claim his word. Do you think God will ever go against his word? Yes or no? No, he will never go against his words. So the best way to get him to answer the prayer request is, this is also from Numbers 14, quote, the verses in the Bible. George Mueller, he usually made it a habit of pointing a verse in the Bible when he prayed and looked up at God and said, Lord, your verse said it right here. So will you please answer that? <laughs> That's why he's famously known for praying in, I believe, over, uh, over 10 or $14 million during the 1800s. Do you know how expensive that was? Crazy. But how did God do that? See, because of that kind of prayer. Look at verse, uh, so let's continue, right? Verse 17. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, you see that? So Moses is pointing out, you said something here, so you have to answer it. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. That was found at Exodus. The Lord quoted that at Exodus. And Moses quoted that verse. Verse 19, Pardon, I beseech the iniquity of this people according unto the greatness of thy mercy. And then look at verse 20. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. He answered it. Ooh, look at that. See, so claim his word. That's extremely powerful. Find any verse. If I were you, I'd do my Bible reading better. And I'd mark down every verse I can use that would match my prayer request. And I would use that to the Lord. <laughs> that way he can answer it better. Another thing concerning prayer which is very important is that, uh, look at 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.17. 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Anyone can memorize that verse. You know what it says? Simply... Three words, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Have a frequent prayer life. 
And I mean not just once a day, but several times a day. That way God can answer it better. You might say, why is that? Because God's, uh, let me tell you this. If, what would, uh, let me say it this way. If you're a child and you have, and you talk with your dad three times a day, if there's a certain favor you have, the father would favor the child that speaks to him three times a day rather than a child that speaks to him only once a day or once a week or visit him once in a blue moon, right? <laughs> you have a heavenly father. You want to find favor with him and get him to answer your uh, request. You spend time with him three times a day or more or, se or several times or frequently. So how many times a day? I really don't know, but I do know this. It should be frequently done, frequent prayer. King David, he prayed evening, morning, and noon. Psalms 55, 17. Daniel 6, 10. Daniel prayed three times a day. So I think that's the best method to do it, is to do it at the morning, one at the afternoon during your lunch break, and then doing it at the evening when work is over. I think that's the best way to do it. So that's how you can have a powerful prayer life, is to do it frequently. That is extremely important. Another thing is faith. You need faith. Matthew 17, 20. This is the, the key, the sole ingredient to getting your prayers answered. If you do not pray believing in his power, He's not going to answer it. That is extremely important. I don't know about you, but when I pray tonight, and every single thing that's in our prayer list, I put my hand on it, and I believe that God can answer it even in that very second. I believe in that. Now, it's true. God's will, you got to understand this. God's will is not always yes. He either answers yes, no, or maybe, which is wait. Okay? Yes, no, and wait. But what I believe in faith is, I don't let that stop me praying in faith. What I believe in faith is this, Lord, I believe so much in your power that you can answer all these prayer requests, and I mean right now in 0.1 second, I believe in that power. And I also believe that when you answer no, and when you answer wait, that that is the best. I believe however way you answer prayer, Lord, that's the best. Let it be done, Lord. And when you pray with that kind of faith, the Lord answers it more mightily, you got to understand. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And guess what? Look at this. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Look at that. Boom. It just goes out of the way. If you just say to this mountain, Remove in faith, it will be removed. Psalms 109 and verse 24. Fasting. If you're going through a real desperate situation, I recommend fasting. Why? Because fasting crucifies the flesh more and focuses more on the spirit. So when you do that, it focuses more on the spirit, not the flesh. And when it does that, that spirit can channel greater. That spirit's power can increase even more. And God can fully take control in your mind and in your prayer and in your speech. And everything that's going to surround your life better. More than some fleshy physical things that your body was so dependent upon. See that? Psalms 109.24 says, My knees are weak through fasting, and my flesh faileth of fatness. So that's, notice right here, the flesh fails. See that? What did Paul say? My power is increased when my flesh is what? Crucified and dead. See that? The more the flesh dies, the more power you gain in Jesus Christ. Now, there are many more tips that I can recommend in prayer, but these are the best that I can recommend to you. And trust me, your prayer life will be dramatically, and I mean dramatically, changed. But prayer... Uh, this might sound a little bit off, but this is very true. Prayer is more important than your Bible reading, than your church attendance, than soul winning, than a lot of things in life, you got to understand. 
You know why? Because prayer is actually getting things done in your life. Prayer is where you see God in action. Because all the other stuff, Bible reading, uh, going to church, soul winning and all that, all of that is you doing something. Prayer is letting God do all the action. See, So that's why prayer is one of the most important things in a Christian's life. If this is the least thing you do in your life, that explains a lot of the lack of your power in your life. I'd recommend... Uh, What's the name of the title? I actually preached a sermon on this. Prayers that shake the earth. Prayers that shake the earth. If you would listen to that sermon, it would be completely life-changing to you. I expound that even better in preaching all this stuff.